You gotta get up. I did me wake up and make a move. Oh. But the world will never see you until you do. They no really care, see they do you. Oh. So make you show them, baby. Oh yeah, show them the real you. Oh yeah, show them what do you get. No, 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 don't let them say what you not know, why you strong, oh. You can't break, no. You want more than one thousand reasons why. You no need to perfect, baby. Cause nobody perfect, darling. No, 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 there's nobody in the world. Where be like you? Hello and welcome. Seem to be something. Okay. <laughs> yes. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Touch a Cell Show with Tui and the Gang. And um, this show is a production of Sickle Management. It is brought to you by the public affairs section of the US Consulate. And today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic being Children's Day. And then last week it was International Year of the Family. And we decided to focus on the family and also children, especially um, not just children, but children with special needs like sickle cell. And we'll have a very special guest. Um, she's a well-known media and she's also a motivational speaker and a relationship coach and many, many more. And I'll bring her on so that um, we can talk more. If you have your questions, please post on our Instagram. Um, sorry, guys, no technology. We couldn't do simultaneously on everything. But you can also watch us on YouTube and at Sami TV and also at Facebook at Sami Updates. Uh, so, I have my 
this one oh yeah no way i had this one hello your network is See, a I for you <laughs> I so I see. <laughs> yeah, uh, your your network is a bit poor. I don't know. It's shaky. Uh, I hope it will get better in time so that we can hear you very well. Hello, can you hear me? So are you too? You are shaky too. Yes, I can. Okay, I'm oh, going to get my. Can I, you, let me just get my headphones because it's easier for us. Okay. I can hear you. Okay, okay. All right. I'll try and see if I can, if it's that very bad with my network. I can't hear you. Well, I'm here. Uh, I, can, I can hear you. Maybe you'll stop okay. and start again. Yeah. Sorry, guys, this is a network issue. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Um, let me try and um, reconnect and see where we can hold on. Uh... You gotta get up. I did me wake up and make a move, oh. Cause the world will never see you until you do. They no really care, see they do you, oh. So make you show them, baby. Oh yeah, show them the real you. Oh yeah, show them what till you get. No, 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 don't let them say what you not I want you strong, oh. You can't bring, no. You want more than one thousand reasons why You no need to perfect, baby Cause nobody perfect, darling No, 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 there's nobody in the world Where be like you my this what do you call it this uh, wireless i am here <laughs> okay so are we are we are we okay uh let me see if this is this this network is bad hi osai how are you uh network issues <laughs> I hope it's better now. I don't know how the network is. Okay. okay. Are, are, we, are we good on my phone? <laughs> yes, if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you use a headphone, it helps with the sound. Okay, let me then. I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me now. I can hear you. It's just that you break. Okay. Can you hear me now? Well, if All I right. break, I will repeat and I will talk slowly so that <laughs> you pick something. Yes, yes. I hope, I hope my people on IG can hear me. Yeah. Is this linked to your IG platform? Yeah. Yes, I, I'm just, it's just me showing. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you don't you record this? Yeah. You can record this and flow it back for your people right exactly yes definitely okay. definitely ready to go and ready to right. so we're ready to go so welcome again uh after a technical hitch and break <laughs> to yes, the yes, show. Right. <laughs> this is this is our new normal yeah yeah we just need to get like this. <laughs> yeah uh -huh. so today we'll be talking about about um uh Availability and presence, uh, the effectiveness of bonding in the family. And I'll be skewing a lot towards uh, parents who have children with special needs. And mm -hmm. but first of all, uh, what, how would you see the family pre-COVID and the family now, the situation of the family now and pre-COVID? You know, the pre-COVID, uh, the family had options of where they could run to if they got tired yeah. of each other. You know what I mean? 
Daddy probably goes mm-hmm. to work. Mommy probably goes to work. Mommy can, can escape to the market. Kids can go to school. And then he said, I will deal with you later at, at worst, you know. But now there's no escape in each other's presence. We're just complete, we're with each other 24 seven. Best case scenario, maybe you sleep eight hours, you know, and then you're back the same day, the same people. And, you know, it can be, there's good and there's bad. Let's, let's be sincere. Mm. The good is that somehow you will see a lot of things about your kids or your spouse or your sisters, whoever you're living with, that you didn't see before because you are now at closer contact without any excuse to step aside. And if you have issues, you have to deal with it immediately or live with mm. it. You know what I mean? So um, it, yeah. it's not, um, it's, it's, it's good and it's bad. Good, you have more time to spend with each other and you learn a lot about each other. Bad because you might find out a lot of bad things that you can't that you didn't live know. with. Yeah, that you didn't yeah. know. And you probably have to learn to live with it or you'll be waiting for, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to be over and then that's it, you know. So, and dovetailing into people who have kids with disabilities. I've dealt with a lot of people who have these issues. I don't have a direct problem. I know how difficult mm. it is to spend the whole day with my kid, right? I can imagine if you had to spend the whole day with your kid that has special needs, take for a child, right? And you can't take away the pain from the child. At least if you take the child to the hospital, you can step aside a little bit and feel like, okay, somebody else is caring for the child. Or if your child had Down syndrome and, you know, it's just you day in day out no okay person to see so, you would tend to begin to even feel more sorry for yourself so everything that you felt pre covid with COVID, it becomes exacerbated. It becomes, it looks bigger, like it, yeah. it's a bigger problem. And post-COVID, you either run away from the problem or you find a way of living with the problem. So that's basically my observation. Okay. All right. I so we're talking Yes, although you are breaking up quite a bit to the latter end, but I, I got the gist of, of of what you are trying to say, uh, and I think that's the reality of not just families with Did you uh, hear <laughs> with special needs, but generally all families. I think they just realize that when because when you when, when you stay with somebody twenty four seven, you 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 start getting irritable with one another. You start noticing things that you didn't notice before and you start getting more irritated but when it comes to bonding people have different perception of bonding how would you describe true, true bonding when it comes to parent to child because some people feel a oh, bonding will just give the child something and oh i've bonded with the child and i'm going on to carry on other things okay so how would you really describe true bonding i'm actually using my love Hello, you're breaking up. Oh dear, these are network issues. <laughs> so it's supposed to be easier. Can we re- try reconnecting on your end or something? It seems to you seem to be breaking off, or maybe it's positioning. Okay. Maybe you should try talking now. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is a network issue. <laughs> yeah, network. It's really, really bad. Oh, dear. What did they do? Are we okay? Adiso, can you hear me? Hello? Sorry? 
You're breaking up. Wow. Should we log? Should we try re-logging in again or something? Because I don't know. I can. I can't. Maybe you should try logging in again. Okay, guys. Let's let's see whether we can log in again. So sorry about this. Uh, we have a lot of network issues. I don't know why today. <laughs> You gotta get up. Why did me wake up and make a move? Oh. Cause the world will never see you until you do. They no really care, see they do you. Oh. So make you show them, baby. Oh yeah, show them the real you. Oh yeah, show them what do you get. No, 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 don't let them say what you're not I want you strong, no You can't break, no You want more than one thousand reasons why You no need to perfect, baby Cause nobody perfect, darling No, 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 there's nobody in the world Where be like you Okay. <laughs> better. Yeah, I hope it's better. It's maybe fuzzy, but I hope it's better. <laughs> Is this better? Uh, yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, uh, just change network, and I will call the name. <laughs> I change network. You know, I always have. Two. I know we've changed so many times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have to. That's one of the things you have learned with COVID. I say the internet, the, the internet highway is the way the traffic jam is now. Yes, you know. uh, yes, uh, indeed. All right. So we're talking about bonding and uh, what true bonding is. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like I said, I said bonding is getting to know somebody and getting to like the person that you know. Because mm. you can get to know somebody and no one to go beyond that just knowing the person. You just stop there. But with your kids, right, you have no choice but to like them because they are your products, in, both in the essence that you cooperated with God to have them and also yeah. because you formed them. You formed them. It's what you taught them. It's what they see you do. It's how they see you deal with things that is the first you are, the, you are their first window to the world. So at the early stage, what your child turns out to become is what a child is seeing. So it's important that you are very much in their lives as much as possible, whether they like it or not, so that they can mm. at least imbibe some of the things that you want. So, and that can only happen if you spend time with them. Time is not about yeah. sitting in the same place. Time is about trying to get into their minds also how was your day? They say, fine. I say, what does fine mean? You know, mm -hmm. what does fine mean? Or you're watching the movie and it says, ah, this is horrible. Why do people behave like this? You know what I mean? They know what you feel yeah. like. Or you're praying and they're saying, why? We always pray too much in this house, Joe. I say, okay, how would you rather <laughs> do it? This is the reason I do it. You know what I mean? Or I don't believe, exactly. you know? So it's, it's the engagement between you and another person that can produce bonding if you spend yeah. enough time doing the back and forth and investing your time in asking questions, even when they don't want to give you answers, in, in listening to them, you know, both in what they say and in how they behave, in not being too shocked by some of the things that you might hear them tell you, you know, oh, exactly. in yeah. trust, you know, even when they tell you things like, I don't like you, you're, I hate you, you're wicked, or, or I think you love, um, and Mary, more than me, you know what I mean? And mm. you, you send feels like it's like maybe I actually do prefer that one or something, you know, I've done something to make him or her think that way. So we have to be, it's like, keep the end in mind. The end is I need to understand this child better to be able to win his or her trust 
so that I am their go-to person when they want things. Uh, they need to trust me. Uh, and yeah. trust can come from bonding. And it comes from spending time. And spending time is not just sitting in the same place. It's talking about things, even if they're not common, you might find commonalities, letting them know what you feel about things and letting them tell you what they feel about things. And it's not everything happens today. We are sitting down two hours. We must talk so we must fun. There are little yeah. things like, okay, we're going to wash clothes today. And as you're washing, you're teaching them about, oh, I remember the very first time I washed clothes in my life. Or you're setting the table or, or they're having a shower or you're watching TV. Taking every moment as an opportunity to drop in the child's mind something that you think will be worth their while and to take from the child something that you think that may help you understand them better. So that's it. Now Tony is frozen in time. Yeah, we're going to switch a roof. <laughs> it's one Don't of those we'll swing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm catching yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no problem. Okay, so um, you you talked about uh, a lot about bonding and how it means it just means more than okay, uh, talking to them, but having a deeper relationship with them. But when it comes mm -hmm. to because here this okay, there's I was talking about like the topic says, oh, I'm available now, I'm available. Then there's your presence. Where do we draw the line between? Those two because people have a perception that being available means a present in the person's life. No, I will give you a small uh, example. When I had my fourth child, was when I started to think about stepping aside to work in my own time because I needed flexi time to spend more time mm. in my head, kids to be more available to my family. So I quit. And I thought I was available. To me, availability meant I could drop everything else if I had to for them. I wouldn't have to worry about my boss saying, oh, you have a deadline or you don't have a deadline. I had my own deadlines. I would finish them, but I could drop everything for them. But for some other people, availability may mean I gave up that work to spend all my time with them. No, I gave up that work to be available to drop it all if I had to. Because I remember when my son, who's now 29, I can't remember, maybe it was like 18, and I was telling him about how, you know, you guys, I've done so much for you. I left work so I can be available for you people. And he said, Mama, you were always coming home late in the night. You were not always there. So I said, yes, I was, and I stopped work. I said, well, she was still working. I said, yes, I was working. But I was working on my own terms. Even though I was working mm. harder, I could be available on call to say, hey, come, your kids need you. Or I could drop everything and say, I'm not doing work today. I'm spending the whole day with the kids. So it's the flexibility of my time that made me more available to my kids on my own terms now. So being available doesn't mean being present. Yeah, being available to me means being able to be there when they need you, right? Because yeah. you can be present and not available. You're there sitting down with them and they're talking to you and you're in another world. Or you're there, they're talking to you and you're telling them, shut up, you shouldn't talk or something like that. Mm -hmm. So when you're present with them, doesn't mean you're available. We should be always available to our children, but we don't have to be always present for them because they will not always be with us. There's going to come a time that they will go away from home. Most times, by the time kids are 17, 18, they are off to the university where they have their independence and it's a whole new world. So then you're present, but you can still be available to them so they can mm -hmm. call you up and give you their problems and share with you and you'll be able to tell them. So the first 17 years of 
their life, 16, I would say 16, 17, parents are best being available for and to their kids. Because by the time they leave, that's the only thing that they can take with them. They can't take your mm. presence with them, but they can take your availability with them. And if you are always available to them, in other words, they can come to you and tell you stuff and share time with you. They will know that even if you are not with them, they can trust you enough to send you words or messages or reach out to you to solve their problem. So that's basically the difference between being available and being present. Okay. All right. Um, let me talk about being present um, or available as a case may be. And the thing is about sometimes about some parents, we find the situation where um, they want to be available, uh, but because of the activities of the children, uh, they find, uh, let me say, inanimate objects. Go out, go out watch TV. Carry your eyes back. Don't disturb me. <laughs> Are parents helping their children or they, they dodging themselves with technology this way? Because I, I remember even growing when my, when my niece, niece, niece and nephew were growing up, um, it was an instinct to, to do that. So they are giving you stress. Oh, okay, turn on the TV. Okay, here's is, here is the game. Go and play. But is it... Is there a thin line between doing that, or are we are we not encouraging them into delving into too much technology? No, technology has its place. We can't take it away from that. It actually is a good. Those things that we send them to do gives mommy and daddy a break. Most times, mommy. I mean, even in my time when I was raising my kids, I remember plumping them in front of television, in front of the Cartoon Network, when I had had it up to here. But the way around ability and presence is that even if you are present in the same room as a child at that point in yeah. time, right, you may not be available to the child, but even if you were not, you can become available by watching it together, by playing the game together, you know, by just watching him do what he's doing and you're guiding him or her and you're being part of it, even though his attention is all on that game. It gives you a break to breathe, but you should be there. Still, mm. you should not always depend on something that can take them away from us. Something that can take them away from us is good temporarily, but we should make, that the, we should make sure that the time with us is that even if it's just to discuss a book that they've read or to read a bedtime story or to play games like, okay, let's sing, who sings better, you know, or to whatever, you know, things that, that uh, or to just tell jokes or to laugh or to tell stories I find work very well. Stories about, you say, okay, let me tell the stories I will remember, but people don't tell stories anymore. You no, can even make up stories. Just say that, that we will not be as, yeah. I lost the art of storytelling. We have, but we can create them. We can recreate those stories, you know. I mean, I used to make my kids um, make up their own stories you know make up a story just say whatever you know and i used to make up stories a lot i mean just pretend like that's what i heard and put a song in it you know so but you find that kids would they they don't really like spending time with their parents to tell you the truth we make them spend time with us and with time they begin to like it. they want to be on their own and now that we have this technology you're talking about it's so much easier so i think we should learn to not give our children this technology too early, no matter what it is. I would yeah. say safely, 12, 14, and then measure. Don't give them the type that keeps them in the world where they, you can't be in that world. But, you know, so now with COVID, I think most school work would probably be online. So if you gave them a smartphone, be, you know, you know put a computer in a place where the whole family is. Even if you have a smartphone, you know, I remember when my kids were in secondary school, I used to take their smartphone in the, in the evening, in the night. Not well, it depends on how old you are. By the time they are going to bed, 10, 30, 11, I collect the smartphone so that they don't start playing with it till the next morning. Yeah. You know, but now, of course, I'm sure they spend their lifetime there, but I'm sure in the back of their head, they still remember that mama doesn't like this, you know, but, you know, so just, just try to get them to fast from time to time from technology as well and control it for as long as you can till they are 17, 18. 
how I used to get around it and say, listen, I'm your mother. I still pay your school fees. So you have to be careful. You have to do what I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And then when, <laughs> yes, I went there grown. I said, look, it's my house. These are my rules. If you want, you have to go and get your own house. You know what I mean? So we have to, we have to take control, you know, even as we are bonding with them. Okay. All right. Um, which brings me to uh, back to um, children with special needs, especially children with sickle cell. A lot of parents, when they have children, they have high expectations of who they should be, how they should turn out, you know, all that. And that is one challenge in itself. Then you have a, ch a child with um, a chronic illness where they may have some limitations um, depending on the challenges they have. But then the parents still have these expectations because we have a, we have a number of that where the parents expect, okay, by now you should have done this, you should have done that. Um, and, and that child is still dependent on the parents because of their special needs. Um, how do, what would you say to parents who are facing that situation? Because we find the extreme where they, they are neglect them or send them out of the house because they feel they are not adding value to, to the family. Or you have the other extreme where because of the way they were fearing the child with chronic illness, they over pampered or over protect, let me know mm -hmm. if protected them that the child does not even have the capacity to, or even self-confidence even able to go past a particular level so what, what would you say about that well with parenting clearly most parents have high expectations for their kids and um, before i talk about the sickle cell challenge i would say my personal example for example right i thought i didn't have um, I didn't tell my kids, you must study this, you must study that, right? But I have children who have ended up doing things that I never thought they would do. My mm. third son, for example, chose his degree by himself. He wanted to do computer engineering. He went to school to go and do computer engineering. It was only in the third year that he came and said, I'm not doing it anymore. After three years of things with him, I wow. just want to do music. I said, ah. And imagine the shock. Now, so, but you see, when we ironed everything out, it was clear to us. My challenge was: Do you think you can feed with music? It's a tough industry. You need a job that will be. So, when we got to the point, we understood that actually, our fears for our children as can they fend for themselves? Have we been able to? And for us, we feel like we'll do the first degree, we'll do the second degree at best, and then you go get a job. I start fending for yourself. And if I'm lucky, you fend for me. Do you know what I mean? And you add mm. me to your bill. So, but at least we want that for them. But we forget that no matter what it is that we wish or desire for our kids, what they turn out to be, we don't have a control over it. So exactly. if you yeah. have a child the same way, we know the limitations of people who have sickle cell anemia. The parent who has such a child will know what the limitations are, physical limitations. Where, for example, the child will not go to school as often and as diligently, as frequently as somebody else. The child may not be as strong as another. It depends because I saw there are sickle cell patients who yeah, are different ways. Yeah. Different ways. So, don't manage so, but we do know that the limitations. So, if you know what the limitations are, prepare your child for what they can do or find out what they want to do and make it possible for them to acquire those skills, knowing that. It depending on how severe their own case may be, there are certain things that they can never be able to do. So putting mm. high expectations on them is just making you stressed out and putting that child or that young adult or even that mature adult on that street. Everybody is unhappy. Your child who's the patient is unhappy because he can't do anything in your eyes that is good. And you are unhappy because the child is not achieving what you thought the child would achieve, we must come to terms with the fact that there are some things that they just can't do. But yeah. there are other things that they can. Why don't you find other things that they can and find ways? There must be, I don't know, but there must be other things. It's not stopping their brain from working, is it? You are yeah, that one, you are 55. Your brain, <laughs> what these days are brain that gives a uh, money? You. Brain, <laughs> no? so, so let's not. Okay. Let's not the body 
please let's not put unnecessary ex expectations on our kids we can have yeah. our expectations we can share with them but we must be prepared to know that their own expectations and challenges might be different and we really can't control that the best we can do is to be calm and find a way to live within that space that they have chosen to live either to work because they can or not to work because they can't okay all right so i'm going to switch flip this switch and i'm coming from the point of view of the child now there's a tendency for them to believe because of their health challenge you cannot do anything and definitely the parents now see them as oh yeah just useless in the house you just come in you eat all our food you don't do anything you're over 20 you have not actually you know but um how how would you say that children should um be able to even at a young age because i always feel that children should be able to be doing something to help in the mm -hmm. house no matter if at least something but um there's a tendency to feel oh you know what is me you know i'm sick now so you know <laughs> what you should understand is they are able to do this because their parents are there what if your parents die there was a young man the very first person that made me become very disability aware i met him some 15 years ago he's now based in the uk he was born with very short arms his arms were you know and he really mm. didn't grow uh, his name is uh, Chooks Etuka. I remember now, if I just think about it. Chooks was one of four boys. And he was the only one that was born with that physical disability. It meant he really couldn't use his arms. You know, but his parents didn't treat him like he was a, with a disability. You know, he was, he was born that way. So they made him fetch water, carry buckets, carry things, do everything that his brothers were doing. He learned to do it with his his hand wasn't bigger than this and i don't think there was no what's that mm. and we read of people who don't have arms and legs and they're doing things you know what I mean? so it's a, it's a parent's it's the parent's responsibility to force that child to try because most times you're feeling guilty you're feeling bad the child can't do anything you know and if that child is not a driven child like someone like you now who's driven i don't think you know if you, even if your parents molly coddled you you were determined to be different, yes. So what oh, yes. is once you molecule, <laughs> once they molecule you, you just sit down there. But what I would tell those children is that don't forget that your parents will not be there forever. Your parents are looking after you now because of the God who's who has who sees you has created you like this. There must be something he has put in you that you can use to survive. You may not have plenty of money. But there has to be something. It doesn't make this. It might be tougher for you than it's for the next person. But you can overcome it. And I think there should be more role modeling and honest sharing and speaking. And I think Sammy does that. You are a good example. They see. But the challenge I think you may be having is that they will not be dumping their problems on you. But you struggle to be where you are. They have to learn to struggle. You are still struggling. So they have to learn to struggle. People have to learn, you know. And it may sound wicked to somebody like me who seems, because when I talk about disability, it's what you can see. That one is easier to deal with. The disability that you yeah. can't see, eh, that is here, is worse. So we all have our disabilities. So but our disabilities shouldn't stop us from achieving whatever it is we want to achieve. It's a function of desiring it. Now, the disability that is physical may stop you from doing certain things. But the one, you have another part of your body that can work, mm. right? You can even find solutions. If you can't walk, for example, get a wheelchair. If you can't get a wheelchair, say, try and find people to contribute money and get you a wheelchair that you're moving around. Although Nigeria is not wheelchair friendly, no. largely. Mm. So we should be making advocacy for those kind of things. You know, if you are struggling, that's when you start to make advocacy. Because you, because of your issues, that's why you started to advocate for people with issues like you, people that you call warriors, right? Because you had to yeah. battle. Yeah. You saw how difficult it was to do things. Okay, I have to be able to help other people to do it. So there must be people like that who say, no, this disability is not going to stop me. I'm going to make the effort to do it. Then you become an example for others who are coming because there are different shades and colors and types of human beings. 
only God knows why he created all of us, or even if he created something like sickle cell disease. I don't know why God created sickle cell. Although I know there's an advantage, eh? yeah, malaria endemic areas. <laughs> you know, I wish you could just take that gene. Yes, malaria endemic areas. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. So really, I mean, the child, <laughs> that child, your parents are not going to be there forever. I tell my kids the same thing. I say, kata, kata. the truth is 25. If at 25, I'm still paying my child's way, feeding and housing the person, then I've done that child a disservice. If I was doing it, for example, my kids at home, you pay. You pay. If you have to stay in my house, you pay for rent, you pay for food. 25 is my cutoff. <laughs> After that, you are your own and you come to my house on holiday. <laughs> Except I didn't finish training you for 25. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're talking about discipline and all that. But where do we draw the line um, between discipline and abuse? Because I, I was watching, I don't know if you saw that video of the woman who tied her child inside the uh, uh, rice sack. Okay, and you see different, I don't right. know if that is the frustration of the country or whatever but you see different people doing and you can't believe that they are the, their parents so where do we draw the line because i know abroad now you cannot even spank but we still africa we're still african, yes. african parents yes we still that but yeah. where do we draw the line where we now realize no this is not the way to do it well that's a tough one because oftentimes if you try to discipline when you are really very upset it can turn to abuse I mean, I have fallen into that, that that instance myself. I remember coming home one day and my whole house was flooded because my first son, then maybe seven, had left the tap on in the bathtub and was running all over the place. And I was so upset, I descended on that boy. And by the time I was done, I felt sorry for him and myself. My kids were crying, Mama, please. But because I hit out in anger, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. I learned to slow down and really not try to hit them when i'm upset you know or that some for some of us it became shouting so anything you do out of mm -hmm. anger can be accepted so if you if a child has annoyed you or frustrated you for example if i was caring for a child with disability and the child has refused to have his meal or her meal and the child is screaming and yelling and all of that i would just walk away from that child and go and get a moment of sanity Mm. Because if you respond, the child won't die. Even if the child should cry for 30 minutes, the child won't die. Just step aside, take a deep breath, go and find something that will get your mind off. Because if you respond to the child immediately, you can, I mean, you, you, can, you can just snap. Because there's a thin line between sanity and insanity. You saw the story of a young girl who killed her one and a, a half child. year old child. Yeah. You know, something mm. broke. In her mind, you know, and the, the, the yeah. way she was narrating and the process that she went through, you know, I could mm. just feel her pain. You know, mm. she could easily have walked through and left that child in that house, and it's, it's better to just leave the child and walk away. So when you find yourself already beginning to, uh, in the process of don't discipline when you are angry. That's what I said. Don't discipline when you are angry, but discipline is good. Take a break and come back and discipline the child and. We should stop, we shouldn't mollycoddle people with disabilities. Take care of their needs. But don't make them feel like, when you say special needs, special needs, special needs. So I feel like, okay, eh, these are everything they will carry for me. Now, it may seem like wickedness, but you have to push your child. Push your child to do some things by themselves, except, of course, they can't. I mean, somebody has Down syndrome and cerebral palsy or whatever, and they can't really help themselves. There's something they can do. And those who take care, they know that they talk to them and you let the child know they understand. Seek help to help you get through those moments. Yeah. It's unfortunate, uh, but those are the mental. I think I think basically we need to do a lot and realize a lot of mental health issues are, are around and um, we need to find ways. It's not like a problem where we have um, support groups where people come and share their shit stress or and all that so i think sometimes we take it out of the wrong thing and in the first thing and anything that just does something we just snap um but let's let well, you have a support group for example it's frustrating yes, because you can't take care of everything. yeah we more support groups more yeah support for support groups <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I, I think it, it takes a lot to get people to understand the need for such sub, 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 sub support groups. They always feel that it's, 
mm. the, the bigger part that's supposed to take care of everything, whereas each person individually mm. can play their own own part. So I'm going to um, talk about um, we talked about discipline, we talked about abuse, but then there's a case of overprotectiveness. I remember from my book, I always felt that the cuddling and they're not um, not um, uh, getting me to do things that I wanted to do. And I, I, I'll tell you a story about a family I met, and they were afraid of the child getting sick, that they didn't allow her to go to school. They didn't, they were even trying to, somebody was even trying to get her to, okay, let's do, let her learn some, maybe meet spy and all that. And but like, oh, she should stay at home. They didn't for a beat and they said, no, she should stay at home. Now, it, it got to a point that the child grew older in the 20s. But when a visitor comes to the house now, immediately a visitor comes because they've been so protective in her. She runs upset because she can't relate. And I was telling the family that, look, the truth of the matter is that I know you love this child. I know you're afraid that she would uh, get sick and she will die and all that. But um, the reality is that, God forbid, that you yourself should die. Yeah, I know. How would she get the independence um, of that? So th th that's the challenge we we face with um, people with um, with um, um, illness that people want to protect, protect, protect. No, I don't want this girl to get sick or this child to get. So what 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 would you tell a parent? Because then there's the opposite end, and we've talked about the opposite end where they feel you must do that, you know. Because like even the way you were telling the story of carrying carrying water, I remember there's some people who with sickle cell who can't do that strenuous thing, but they can do other type of work. You know, understand? So when do we balance that issue? It's a tough one because, you know, but it's a tough one to the extent that as a parent, you find parents saying, I don't want my children to suffer like I suffered. You know, mm -hmm. that's a standard thing. Then you can imagine also if you had a parent that actually has a disability, you know, or a need that you know that it's special and the society, they can't deal with the society. But mm -hmm. it's like that because our life is the way it is. If we learn to understand that there are different shades of people in every society, we're not all the same, then we can be more understanding of those people. For example, yeah. if I was, if I was uh, at, you know, at a crossroad and I find a child who's in a wheelchair or who's on crutches, I should have the sense of trying to help that child cross mm. even more than somebody else. Or I will understand if the child can go up the stairs or if the child can go and I will somebody extend the heart. So if we have a society that is more compassionate and Sunny. accommodating yeah, that's of true. Two different that people, that then like parents, parents will be less afraid. But however it is, they need not to protect their children too much. Let them go and fall down a few times and cry <laughs> and come out. You go to the, let them go and try and fail, but be there, which is why I say, you know, a parent who is available and present, but about available to know that, you know, I, I remember the first time I told my child, I mean, it's still tough to, to walk alone on the street to go and buy, what was it, popcorn? Eh, you mean how to walk? Because we are so afraid of my children getting lost or whatever. So I said, go, don't worry. Oh, you know what I did? She was going, but I was at the back hiding mm. and just guiding to be sure that they get there. So we can also make our children do, even though we are guiding them, so that they can try. You know, if they try and they fail, that's different. They should try. They should try to survive. Talk to people who know. Find out how it's done and help them. What do you need to make it possible for them to do it? Do it. No matter how poor we are. I want to talk about people who are, you know, I, I can't stress this enough. There must be more support groups for people with different disabilities. And this support group people have to be tougher and they have to be supported to make the support easier. Because if, for mm -hmm. example, somebody knows I can get uh, knowledge, knowing how to take care of my child here, what we have is people who have disabilities or challenges, they are looking for the support group that they will just dump their children on and run away. Exactly, yes. They don't want the one that they, they will just tell you what to do and then you go home. But because they've carried this problem for so long, they're just looking for somebody to dump. So we must begin to think that, look, it is my cross. I have to carry it, but somebody can help me learn the ways to make this cross lighter. Maybe they tell you, put the cross here today, then after two hours, carry it, put it on your head, 
And that's why I was put it here. But they won't take your cross from you. They will not mm. take the cross from you. Because if you have that expectation and they don't take it, you'll be so disappointed. You take it out on your child again and say, look at this child. Meanwhile, you brought the child to the world. The child didn't come to the world asking that, hey, I want to be born. You said, yes. you gave the child. So between you and God, yeah, leave the child out of the matter and do what you have to do for that child. You know. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to be talking about um, the same thing about the perpetrativeness. Uh, I know it doesn't happen with lower income families, but for middle income, high income, we're always protective our children from going outside to play, build for the highest wall around you. They don't have chance to meet with their, oh, their oh. friend, the next door neighbor and all that. And um, you find out that they, they, they only find, the, the only way they can relate is in school where they see their friends. And it may not be friends that, are, how would I call it, are, are good for them in that sense. And of course, because of all that, they don't know, the parents don't know what's going on in, in school, who their friend is, because they don't bring anybody in. They're, they're being busy being protective. How how would you say um, uh, parents should deal with it, and how would what would you encourage parents to do in order to make their child become more independent and uh, not be afraid of kidnapping? I know all the other negative things. You know, I had a friend who went said that uh, oh, as her children had grown up, she regretted not letting their children walk to to school to school, which wasn't so far away, or go down the road, or even enter a bus as an experience, you know. But that is the reality we face ourselves, because we don't get our children to explain what we have experienced. So how, how what will you say to those parents? Um, are, you, are you online? You seem to have frozen again <laughs> okay guys if you have any questions in the meantime please don't forget to put it on uh you can i can i think you're okay now can you, can you speak did you hear what i said i don't know if you got yeah, my question you, what they say okay you're freezing if you have any questions, please don't forget to post on our Facebook page, YouTube page, even on Instagram, and uh, we'll iron it out. Sorry for the network issues, but that's, hey, that's life. <laughs> Maybe you should. Okay, I think, but if I'm taking this generally or just people with children with needs? I think generally, too, because it's, it affects everybody, uh, whether in the same mm -hmm. way, whether children with sickle cell and, or not. Uh, I am or I am. Okay. I did. I've been hearing you since. I got your question I was going to answer. I said, is it, are you talking about people with, oh, uh, sorry. You're freezing, yeah. So that I can speak. Obviously, you heard what I said the last time. Yeah. Can I go on? Yes. Yeah. Yes, go on. Okay, go I'm not just freezing, I'm slow. So what I was saying <laughs> is I will go ahead. What I'm saying is <laughs> it's slow, but we'll just we'll, we'll, obviously you're still hearing eventually. And um parents are usually very protective of their children, whether they have disabilities or not. And I can understand that. It's understandable because uh uh, we want the best for them. But sometimes we have to understand that we may not always know what's best for them. And association is always good, even if negative things come out of it. They need to see other people. They need to see other people that are not like them. And they also need to see other people that are like them so that they can have something to compare. Because we are all social human beings. We're not made to be mm -hmm. islands even if we have disabilities. So you should give them the opportunity to step out and meet other people. Even make friends that would hurt them because it's helping them to grow. Make friends that would probably tease them. They will learn how not to be, you know, but you've got to expose them. They will cry and come back to you and say, oh, this, oh, you know what I mean? But just be there mm -hmm. for them. And I know how painful it can be when people are, uh, uh, when people are, are critical 
of your children, much less when they are looking at them and pointing fingers, you know. But you must know that I think what I always say is that every human being has something special about them. They must feel special, you know. So they must go with that sense of I've got something, you know, no matter what anybody says. It may sound negative to me, but I'm not going to let it take me down. And I'm going to struggle because I know I can sing. After all, I know, okay, these people don't love me, but my mommy loves me, or my daddy loves me, or my auntie loves me, or my sister loves me. Oh, I know that my legs may not be as strong as my sister's own or my brother's own, but my mind is stronger than their own, right? And I know that my sense of compassion is stronger than their own. I know that my ability to solve math, or whatever it is, we must, we must praise the good in every child let them go and experience the bad outside and be there to at least diffuse whatever they come back with. Even if it is, um, it looks like you have not done much, you would have deposited something in their head, but they need to experience the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, thank you so much. And it brings me to the final question. How do parents continue to keep their love and glue uh, for their child um, even when they become annoying or have poor performance or whatever <laughs> because let's face it it takes a lot of patience <laughs> to bring up a child so you might get to that teenage years <laughs> and, well, as it it mean, years or is it the mean is it the, i don't know whether it's the mean or the z years now the whole thing is confusing me <laughs> You must understand that as a parent, you are living in the same age as they are, but you are influenced by the age that you grew up. Yeah. The age that you grew up is different. The age that we grew up, we couldn't answer our parents back. The age that they are growing up now, they can answer and question you. You remain their parents. You remain the primary figure. So you cannot say because my parents I couldn't ask and uh, you know i couldn't ask i couldn't question them i can't stop my kids from questioning me now but i can choose how i respond to the questions that they give sent to me like they say okay why can't i do this I say well because i am the mother i mm. am the parent i take responsibility why because i pay your fees and you can't do that on your own and why that, and they, where else can they go beyond that you know, so you've got to be able to answer them, painful as it is. Eh, why is it that the world is like this? Why is that this person has this and I don't have? This is the age they are going up in. So we yeah. can't afford to get annoyed, right? We do get annoyed. We will get annoyed, but we should sweep it aside. So parent for the time, but the key word there is parent. You still remain the parent. And don't let them make you lose or throw away that responsibility because you want to be friends or you want to be kind or you want to protect them from being harmed or whatever. You are a parent. What does a parent do? They guide, they yeah. guard. You guide the child because that is your immediate environment. You can only influence your child first. You guide them. This is how they do this. In this family, we don't lie. Whether we are living in 1909 or 2029, Lying is not acceptable. Why? Because lying is demeaning to the person you are yeah. supposed to be telling the truth to. It makes you look or insincere. It makes a hair. Or in this family, we choose not to eat whatever it is. You know, you must make them understand what the family rules are and why. So that even if they do it, which they might try, they know they are going against your rules. But don't hesitate to let them know what works for you as a family and what doesn't work, regardless of what the whole world is saying. In my family, yeah. we don't accept. Let them know where you stand. All right. Thank you so much. It's been a very interesting, I think it was supposed to be 45 minutes, but because of the honor and off of, <laughs> of that yeah. work, yeah. it made it more now. But it's been really, really interesting. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. Thank you, I am doing it because you are also an inspiration to a lot of people. Oh, right? thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you. So you. Much.
So, guys, thank you for joining us. Sorry for the network issues, but I hope you've been able to get something or two. And remember, each of us, whether as children or as parents, we all have responsibilities. And it's very important that we follow up to those responsibilities as much as we can. Have a good day, everyone. God bless. Thank you. The problem it doesn't download on this phone. I don't know why. It doesn't download.